Welcome to another episode of the Symptom Series. Now, before we begin, this is what I do in my practice based on my patient population. But what I'm going to tell you is something that's useful for you to perhaps share with your healthcare provider. And before we begin, make sure to like, share, and subscribe to this video before we go. I see this as one of the most undetectable cancers. What is ovarian cancer? Well, that seems hopefully rather obvious. Ovarian cancer starts in the ovaries. The problem with ovarian cancer in that unlike many other cancers, ovarian cancer can spread very early in the course of the cancer. And sadly, it can spread throughout the belly, throughout the abdomen, even while it's undetectable. And with some cancers, a metastasis can occur that shows up right away. For instance, lung cancer is notorious for showing up as a brain metastasis, as its first sign, quite frankly. Ovarian cancer can spread throughout the belly without many women even knowing of it. So, because of that, I want to discuss a number of symptoms that should make us look for ovarian cancer. First of all, abdominal bloating and swelling. Now, please, 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 if you are nearing menopause, perimenopause, if you're a postmenopausal woman, persistent bloating and swelling of your abdomen is not just getting old. It's not just a food intolerance. It is something that needs to be looked at. That's different than if you're a 25-year-old with irritable bowel syndrome. But if you've had good bowels for most of your life, and then suddenly you're getting all this bloat or swelling, or you're noticing that you've got a belly and your weight isn't going up. This is something that needs to be investigated and investigated soon, because this could often be the sign of ovarian cancer that's already metastasized throughout your belly. So pay attention to this one specifically. Now, goes without saying, if you have pelvic or abdominal pain, particularly lower in your abdomen, even if it's one-sided, particularly if it's one-sided, pay attention to this. Older women frequently get urinary tract infections. And many of my patients who subsequently were found to have ovarian cancer have been treated by their well-meaning healthcare provider for their lower abdominal pain by getting a urinalysis. The urinalysis showed a urinary tract infection. And so they were given one or two or three courses of antibiotics for their lower abdominal pain diagnosed as a persistent urinary tract infection. And it really wasn't until it was too late that anyone, when I saw the patient, got a test for ovarian cancer. And unfortunately, there it was. Another symptom is difficulty eating or feeling full quickly. So a noticeable change in your appetite or more importantly, the fact that you get full very quickly, even after a small amount, is a sign that something is going on in your abdomen. Frequent urination. Now, again, many people attribute this to a urinary tract infection. But because the ovaries are literally sitting on top of the bladder, a irritation from that ovarian cancer on the top of your bladder makes you feel like you have to go all the time. And again, many well-meaning physicians get a urinalysis, which is a good idea, but 50% of women with a urinary tract infection are asymptomatic. They just walk around with a urinary tract infection. And that wasn't the cause of their urgency and frequency. Changes in bowel habits, 
the ovarian cancer can metastasize to the surface of the colon, to the small bowels, and can even obstruct the bowels. So if you've got constipation that's new, similarly, if you've got diarrhea that doesn't seem to go away, and you're of the proper age group, you need to look for ovarian cancer. Unexplained weight loss or pain that doesn't have an explanation, you need to look for ovarian cancer. Fatigue, no, it's not just getting old. Fatigue that you never had before with any other of these symptoms are important to look for. Finally, back pain. Back pain that doesn't go away, that doesn't seem to be positional, like when you go to bed, it doesn't get any better, or standing or sitting or lying on your side doesn't make it get any better. That can be not only a symptom of ovarian cancer, but absolutely can be a symptom of pancreatic cancer another one of these cancers that are diagnosed much too late. Now, there are weird symptoms of ovarian cancer, indigestion or heartburn, persistent cough or hoarseness, shortness of breath, and swelling in the legs. Now, this last one, if you have metastatic ovarian cancer in your abdomen, you can actually get compression of the veins carrying blood back up from your legs. And every now and then we see a woman who's perfectly normal, except that her belly has gotten bigger and her legs have started to swell. And she can walk all she wants. She doesn't have shortness of breath, but her legs have swollen and her belly feels full. And some women will say, you know, I feel like I'm three months pregnant. What's with that? And I'm 70 years old. We do see occasionally someone pop a hernia, either an umbilical hernia by your belly button or a hernia down in your groin. And that's unusual as we get older to suddenly develop a hernia. And it can be from increased abdominal pressure. Pain during intercourse. It's got a fancy name called dyspareunia. But if you've not had pain with intercourse throughout your life, and now it's suddenly painful, that's something to look for. As well as changes in vaginal discharge, vaginal bleeding, discharge, or even change in the mucus secretion, that's something to look for. Now, beware. Doctors often misdiagnose ovarian cancer as smoldering appendicitis, a hernia, or a urinary tract infection. Now, you could have smoldering appendicitis from a retrocecal appendix. It exists. I've seen it. You could have a hernia. You could have a urinary tract infection. I'm not saying you don't. But in your age group, you really want to look for ovarian cancer. Now, I'll say one other thing. If you have been put on hormone replacement therapy later in your life for the purpose of staying young, sadly, in my practice, I have seen three women develop ovarian cancer with late hormonal replacement therapy. I have seen a number of women with late hormonal replacement therapy develop breast cancer. Now, I'm not equating the two, but if you are on hormone replacement therapy later in your life and you develop these symptoms, you need to ask for evaluation for ovarian cancer. One other thing, if you're not on hormone replacement therapy and your physician is following your estrogen levels like I do every three to six months, and he or she sees an elevation in estrogen that you are not taking supplemental estrogen or other hormone therapy, that in itself prompts me to order an ovarian cancer test. Now, what test can you determine? First of all, there's a great blood test. It's called CA125. And quite frankly, it's either positive or negative. This is an incredibly cheap, useful test 
to evaluate for ovarian cancer. Are there other ways? Yes. Pelvic exams by your physician or gynecologist. Pelvic ultrasounds are often extremely useful. You can get a CAT scan or an MRI. You can get a vaginal ultrasound, which looks really well at the ovaries. That's the diagnosis. And here's the good news. If you're thinking about these things early, or if your physician is watching your estrogen levels and it pops up, early ovarian cancer is an incredibly curable problem. You take it out, you're done. On the other hand, ovarian cancer that has spread in metastases is a whole new problem. Now, can we manage metastatic ovarian cancer with drugs? Yes, we can. But with any chemotherapy, we know that these ovarian cancers become resistant to the chemotherapy. And luckily, the chemotherapies can be changed from year to year to kind of keep you going. But the point of all this is, the sooner you recognize this problem, the less we have to worry about all those other needs. So that's why the symptoms of ovarian cancer need to be looked at seriously, particularly if you're perimenopausal or postmenopausal woman, and particularly if you're on late hormonal replacement therapy. I don't mean to belittle hormone replacement therapy. I use it in my practice, but I use it in a specific way in a specific window. And I see, unfortunately, too many women who have been put on it late may suffer the consequences. The other thing that comes up every now and then, a great number of women have had hysterectomies for a variety of reasons. And most women know whether they also have their ovaries and fallopian tubes removed during the hysterectomy. But I'm always surprised that a great number of women don't know whether their ovaries are still there. So they have gone through life thinking that because they had a hysterectomy, they're safe from ovarian cancer, only to learn that Yes, they had a hysterectomy, but the physicians did not remove the ovaries and fallopian tubes. So just because you've been told or you know you've had a hysterectomy, you got to make sure that they didn't leave your ovaries for good reasons. It comes up every now and then and don't think you're safe because you had a hysterectomy. More amazing episodes just like this one. Watch now. The more we learn about the gut microbiome, the more we learn about how everything that's going to happen to us, even at the hormonal level, is being controlled by minute one-cell organisms that live in your gut.